Hi everybody, I am that nursing prof and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about Crohn's disease. So let's get into it. So first thing we need to know is that it is a type of inflammatory bowel disease. So there's inflammation that's occurring. It typically occurs in the terminal of the ileum or the beginning of the colon, but can occur anywhere in the small and large intestine. It presents as scattered patches. Sometimes they call this the cobblestone appearance because there'll be pieces of tissue that are diseased next to pieces of tissue that are healthy. So that's what happens. That's what it looks like if we were to look at it on our scope. Um, and it is characterized by flare-ups and remission. And if you're having constant flare-ups and constant remission, scar tissue can develop, which causes even more problems, which we'll talk about. So who's at risk for Crohn's disease? Usually diagnosed around age 30, people of Eastern European descent, those who are cigarette smokers, who use NSAIDs routinely, and then genetics. If you have a family history of it, you're more likely to get it. There is no official cause of Crohn's disease, so what they do is they look for these risk factors. When it comes to remembering the signs and symptoms of Crohn's disease, you can remember Christmas. So C is for that cobblestoning, so you have those patchy areas where you have diseased bowel and healthy bowel. A high temperature, so these patients will have high fevers. Reduced appetite and reduced weight, so they're not going to be hungry and so they're going to lose weight. I, um, intestinal fistulas can form. S, their stool has blood in it. So if you were to take a stool sample, you would notice that there was blood in it. T is for transmural involvement. So many layers of the bowel can be involved in this. Malabsorption, so they're not eating very much. And then when they do eat, that food isn't being absorbed properly. So they are losing weight and their body isn't as healthy. It's not using those nutrients in the way that it should. A, abdominal pain. As you can imagine, having inflamed bowels is very painful. So abdominal pain. And then strictures can occur. So this is like the narrowing of the intestine, which can also cause more problems and pain for our patient. So these are the signs and symptoms of Crohn's disease. Some important tests your patient might undergo. Blood samples and stool samples. We're checking for blood in the stool, but then we're also checking for signs of infection, inflammation, electrolyte imbalances, things like that. They're definitely going to want to do a colonoscopy. So this is a procedure where the patient is under conscious sedation. So they're kind of awake, kind of not. They're able to listen to instructions. And we put the scope, so the camera, up their body. And then we can observe their intestines for those patches. They might want to do a CT or an MRI. And then sometimes they might also want to do something called a capsule endoscopy. It's kind of the same concept as a colonoscopy. It's a camera. We're trying to visualize what's going on in there. Except in this case, they're giving you a little camera to swallow. And then they're going to watch it as it goes through your GI tract. And we're going to see, okay, where's the problem? Where is this, you know, inflammation occurring in the body? When it comes to nursing interventions for the patient with Crohn's disease, our big priority here is having a very thorough GI assessment. You want to know when was their last bowel movement? What is the frequency of their bowel movements? How would they describe them? You're going to do a very thorough head to toe. You're going to listen to their bowel sounds. You're going to palpate. You're going to percuss. All of those things are going to be very, very important. So a very thorough, excellent GI assessment is the key to taking care of these patients. You're also going to assess for signs of infection or signs of dehydration, so um, dry mucous membranes, poor skin turgor, a high fever, things like that. Sometimes these patients will end up getting an ostomy, so you're going to have to do ostomy care. Very important to educate them if they are a smoker, a cigarette smoker, they need to stop smoking. Smoking can exacerbate Crohn's, it can make it so much worse. So smoking cessation education is key if your patient is a smoker. Sometimes the patient will be on TPN, 
temporarily, hopefully. Um, so this is where they get um, food and nutrients through the IV. So you as the nurse are going to be in charge of managing that per doctor's orders. They're going to be on strict I and O. You want to monitor their weight. Sometimes if they're in the hospital, they might want them weighed every single day. If they're not having a flare up and they're at home, they need to come in and get weighed for every single appointment, things like that. It's going to depend on the person, um, but monitoring their weight is really important. Administering medications. So there's two big treatments for Crohn's disease and a lot of times they're used together. So medication therapy and nutrition therapy. And these are a little bit more complicated, so I wanted to talk about them individually. There are a variety of different types of medications that your Crohn's patient might be on. So I thought let's talk about them. First of all, corticosteroids. Now, ideally, they would not be on these for a very long time. These are short-term use medications, and they work by reducing inflammation. Immune system suppressors, they also work to um, reduce inflammation, but they do so by working on the immune system itself, so systemically, whereas corticosteroids are a little bit more local. And frequently, these two are given at the same time. They're used together. And I just wanted to put an example of an immune system suppressor, um, methotrexate. That's a pretty common one. It's a pretty popular one. Some other potential medications your patient might be on. Antibiotics. These are used to decrease drainage from fistulas if they have fistulas. Pain relievers, because of course, remember, it causes that abdominal pain. But something very important to remember, no NSAIDs. We're not giving NSAIDs as pain relievers to our Crohn's patients. That'll make it worse. They might be on antidiarrheals because they're having frequent loose stools. Probiotics because of that malabsorption. Vitamins and supplements, right? Again, because of that weight loss, that poor appetite, that malabsorption. And then a lot of times they'll be on iron supplements as well because this can cause anemia and fatigue, and that's going to help with those symptoms. When it comes to nutritional therapy for Crohn's disease, a couple of things. Um, they may need to be on TPN, maybe temporarily in the hospital setting, or maybe they'll go home on it as well. We want to teach them to limit dairy products because dairy is very inflammatory. Teach them to eat small, frequent meals and to avoid foods that could trigger a flare-up, such as greasy foods, fried foods, caffeine, alcohol, things like that. You want to avoid those foods. Drink a lot of water. Patients with Crohn's disease will frequently be very dehydrated, so it's important that they get enough fluids in their body. So encourage them to drink a lot of water. Make sure they're getting enough carbohydrates, fruits, vegetables, and fat in their diet. Medication therapy and nutritional therapy are the two most common treatments for Crohn's disease, but there is another one not used as often that I did want to make sure I brought up in this video, and that is surgery. So what happens during this surgery is they will remove the portion of the bowel that is inflamed, that is affected, and they will connect the two pieces of healthy tissue together. This is not used very often because it's kind of like a temporary fix. It doesn't mean that a new portion of the bowel isn't going to get inflamed in the future. It's just something that works for a little while. It's helpful for a little while. So not commonly done, but it is something that does exist on top of nutritional therapy and the use of medications. So I just thought I'd bring that up. The last thing I wanted to talk about in this video are some potential complications that can occur. Some of these we've mentioned before. So we talked about fistulas can form, strictures, so the narrowing of the intestine, and that the patient will be malnourished because of malabsorption of nutrients. Other things that can also happen, an abscess can form, and typically they will have an abscess form and then that can turn into a fistula. And then fissures, which are like little tears in the lining of the bowel. So as you can imagine, these things can be very dangerous. They can lead to infection, malabsorption of nutrients, throws off your fluid and electrolyte balance. So very, very dangerous. We want to avoid these complications if we can. So that's why good treatment, good nursing interventions, good assessment, an excellent GI assessment is key into helping these patients. 
So that was my video on Crohn's disease. I hope you found this helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. And if not, I'll see you on the next one.